Hello again fellow YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you the install of Windows 10 on my legacy HP pre-installed computer. Currently this PC is running Windows 7 Professional and I'll be installing Windows 10 Professional. Before I do that however I've decided to clean up some of the applications that I had installed and I'm currently doing a defrag Next, I will go ahead and do a full Acronis backup, and then the full install will start. Now that the disk defragmentation is complete, we will go ahead and set up to do the Acronis backup. First thing I'd like to do is make sure I have enough space. Drive C on this one terabyte hard drive that I have partitioned in two halves currently has only 57 gigabytes. Um, occupied. So that's more than enough to fit within my new volume L, which is the free space that's on the second hard drive. I will now go ahead and um, take my uh, Acronis Rescue disk, insert that into the USB port. Once that comes up cleanly, I will do a system restart. Now, on the system restart, I will hit escape, and that should get us set for booting from the USB stick. Here we go, I have hit it. And now we're inside of the uh, boot menu. So let me scroll down to the USB disk, hit enter. and it's starting a Cronus loader or a Cronus USB stick I loaded it with the Linux image I will now click on the Acronis true image 64 bit oh, something's changing now standard uh, Linux and it's up ready to take its selections so I'm going to pick the full disk back up which will back up the entire disk and its partition. Okay, let me select the disk one, and I want to leave checked the 488 gigabyte partition. I will uncheck the others. As I can confirmed earlier it's only 56.93 gigabytes for that particular partition and we hit next I'm going to create a new backup leave it checked at that but I'm going to go to browse because I got to select the right location there we go I'm going to pick the fixed disk in this case it looks like it might be the new volume because I didn't rename that volume when I created it and it is drive G here so I will click create that doesn't have much on it and I will just pick the root of that particular image area for now pick generate name but I'm going to rename it to HP 10 leg for legacy one terabyte which is the one terabyte disk drive that I'm backing up say OK the choice is to create a new backup archive which is correct it's got the file name right click next I think we're good. Now we just hit proceed and we're ready to go. I'm going to pause it at this point after I click on this and uh, pick it up once uh, this backup is completed. Actually I've started it again just to show that uh, the operation is in progress. Now that the backup is complete and by the way the uh, backup utilized about 50% of the disk space uh, on its backup image then it 
it existed on the original disk that it uh, backed up. Anyway, I want to open this case up. It's already been blown out, so I don't have to do much of that right now. That was just uh, about two months ago. Oh, it's a captured screw. That's good. Open this one up. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go through all of the parts on this particular one. Um, it does have a, uh, a Sapphire graphics card in it that I originally put in. I could spend quite a while talking about this uh, CPU fan and cooler, but I don't think it's probably worthwhile doing that right now because uh, that would be a, a much longer video. Take a look at the hard drive cage. This hard drive cage has two hard drives in it. As you can see, the one on top is actually the one that I added later on. And it's a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. The one behind that is the um, original 500 gigabyte hard drive, which I think was Samsung, but we'll have to open it up and take a look. So I'm just going to take this out, make sure I get the hard drive out of there, and then uh, we can load up after that only onto the one terabyte. Always when you're cutting these tie wraps, make sure you don't. Uh, cut any wires with it. In this particular one you have to remove these two screws and the whole cage comes out. So let me go ahead and remove the cables, both the SATA data and the SATA power cables from each of the drives. As you can see here, this, this particular computer was old enough to uh, to have the regular Molex type connectors that put adapters on them to go to SATA type. That's the way it came. Um, those adapters were already in there, at least uh, two of them, because I added a, a second DVD drive uh, in addition to adding a second hard drive. So I had to add two as I recall. Reposition this. Take out these two screws. One here, and one here, and I believe the entire cage at that point will come right out. Tab lock down here. There we go. And the entire cage with the two hard drives comes out and is fully accessible. So I'm going to leave the original drive in the the, uh, the new hard drive. I'm sorry, the new Western Digital that I last added to it, and I will take out the original one, which is I believe the Samsung. Find out when I get it out of here. Uh, Actually, I'm wondering, should I do a key smile on this one? I have over on the side here the uh, hard drive case I pulled out of my uh, legacy computer. I wonder if we'd be better to use this one because it has some nice air gap spacing to it. Wouldn't matter with just one hard drive in it. Aside for a second, let's take a look at this. And it is a Samsung 500. I don't know if you can see that there. 500 gigabytes. Means here's zero gigabytes. Get this hard drive cage back in here. It looks like I have to go down back to the bottom. Get this cable's out of the way. So it has to go down into this. And then it looks like it feeds in this way. And the latch lock in place. So that's it. Retaining this hard drive cage back on.
with that, looks like this one has a splitter. I'm going to go ahead and take out this one SATA cable from here, the motherboard. That's one that I'm not sure if I had it better than that. Now I'll move this one back to where I believe it originally was. I think this is the original SATA cable, SATA data cable that was in this particular computer. There. Go ahead and put the SATA data cable on. Locked in place, good. And I'll put the one of the power, so the power cable is on. Good, locked into place. And then for the other one, I'll just put a tie wrap in there to uh, keep it out of the way. Notice this bundle of cables. There's no <laughs> easy way to dress the cables on these older computers. That's the wrong size. So you were forced to try to, at least I was forced to try to bundle them up and put them towards the side of the case that would not interfere with any airflow. This is a standard technique of mine to sort of bunch them up. That. That'll probably be good enough for now. Good enough. One thing I did want to say about the the fan, CPU fan and heatsink was notice that this tie wraps on it. I think I mentioned in my other video that I actually had to uh, to do this because the plastic rods that went up and caught the fan from the heatsink on this one they just broke by themselves and the heatsink and the fan were actually completely disconnected from the CPU to things were blue screening on me quite often and when I took it apart to clean it and it was very bad at that point in terms of dust that's when I realized that problem and I they also replaced the, the heatsink compound and um, took care of it so with that, I think I've got a pretty good start. Let me uh, double check. Yep, everything's connected. So it's kind of tough. There we go. And then uh, let me just screw it. Okay. HP chose to put there. that ready to proceed with Windows 10 installation.